Hi, this is Joseph. Today, I'd like to explain a few different strategies and methods that I use to determine when there are days that it's just going to be moving relatively slow, mostly sideways. There's not going to be a whole lot of participation and price isn't likely to move very far. So what we're looking at right now, I'll, I'll elaborate a lot more about what I'm talking about here in the setups. But what we're looking at is the pound dollar, uh, sorry, the pound, and this is a 30 minute chart. Now, for those of you, I'm going to actually share this on the YouTube channel as well, along with my uh, coaching clients. So first of all, coaching clients, please be aware that I am going to share this publicly. <laughs> so that way, you know that it is in the members area, but I'm also going to post it so that that way, some of the people that are on YouTube that are trying to follow, you know, along with some of the advice and some of the videos that I've been posting for free, they're, they're trying to use this information to, to supplement some of their education and to help them get a better understanding of trading. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of people out there doing it. So I, I want to help when I possibly can, because I think it's um, very misleading that you would gather some of these little simple tricks and hacks and and little simple strategies that, that people don't elaborate on. I see it too much on, on YouTube, and they don't explain the deep down um, mechanism that, that causes price to move either more significantly or on certain days with less participation, meaning it's going to cover less of a distance if you get into a trade. So this is something that I actually experienced when I first started trading. I would get into a trade and I'm going to show you my chart over here. I'm going to bring the MetaTrader into the view here for just a moment. And one of the things that I would do when I first started trading, this is back in 2000 and 2001, I was buying all these candlestick uh, books, books on candlesticks, and I would see candlestick patterns like this. So you can see that this is, you know, uh, it's a three candle pattern and it's also engulfing there's a lot of information here and i would immediately in a situation like this place a buy order thinking that price is just going to take off and it was just primarily based on the the uh, candles themselves now sometimes you can go a little bit deeper and you can use certain indicators that will help you or perhaps you could go with a low and a high up here and draw your fibonacci tool let's say if it if it actually lends itself to that kind of movement and you'll draw a fibonacci tool here and you'll realize let's say for example i'm just saying for example and this is what i would experience this would sit here right around the 618 retracement level and i would think okay great got it i got a 618 i got a bullish engulfing candle you know evening star or morning star whichever direction it is you're trading it in in this case i'm expecting some kind of a bullish move and i would get into the trade and then all of a sudden it wouldn't go anywhere and it would start to go sideways for like hours and sometimes I would have a stop initially down here at the low, and then I would think, okay, well, as it's approaching that stop, I would think, well, maybe this is the actual stop I should be using, and then I would change it. Either way, you can see that in a situation like this, it wasn't going to work. So how can you determine if this is going to work? How can you determine that you should be jumping into a trade like this at this particular time? And there's a few other patterns here. Here's another one. And if I saw something like this, this is, again, back when I first started trading, I was very, very inexperienced. I didn't have enough information. And I was trading off of simple uh, tips and tricks. And I refer to them as hacks. They're not, but that's just the word that I chose to, to identify that when you use, let's say, the 618 level, you use the Fibonacci tool. I did it for a long time. Or you use certain indicators or you use candle patterns. They work some of the times. But when they do not work, you get confused. I used to get confused. And I would wonder, why isn't it working? What can I do? What am I missing? And I'm going to explain to you what it is that you're missing. Because what you should learn is something else first, which is the price movement mechanism. I'm going to explain that in a moment. This is part of my training. And then once you understand that price movement mechanism, you can start to use the 618, the candle patterns, and these indicators in a much more effective manner. So you can see again here, expecting some kind of a bounce. It just wasn't going to work. You know, there were several, again, several opportunities. And I would ultimately get stopped out if I was to trade like that and not understand these concepts. So let's move on. And now I'm going to explain to you the concepts. So the price movement mechanism is what I refer to as price structure. A lot of people will use and throw around that word price structure, and they're using it very loosely. A lot of these people on, on YouTube, I watch some of these videos, and I know what they're talking about. I, I understand what they're trying to say. But they don't have a, a good understanding of that mechanism as to how and why price moves the way that it does. There's a big picture here. There's smart money. Smart money, very often people use that term loosely, but it's the more informed trader, the more inform whether it's a hedge fund or a big bank or 
a big investor, whatever you want to refer to it as, there is individuals who have dedicated themselves to learn this information, and they're the ones playing this a lot better than you are if you're failing, if you don't understand this. You need to understand this so you can see who's trading at certain times. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I mean by that is that very often you'll see that people with inexperience will try to execute trades inside of choppy ranges like this. And there's no reason for anybody to really be trading here if you understand these concepts. The smart money is not trading in these ranges. They're not trading off of bullish engulfing candles or 618 bounces unless they line up with the overall price movement mechanism, which is ultimately price structure. So we have a downtrend here. This is a perfect example. Now, this is a 30-minute chart. This would work on a daily time frame, on a one-hour chart. Sometimes it'll work on a five-minute chart. It moves a little bit faster, and you got to be careful, and you have, you have to have a pretty good overall direction if you're going to be trading on a smaller time frame, but you get the point. This is very limited. That's the other thing I want to explain is that by watching this information, this is not going to solve all of your problems if you do not understand these concepts entirely, entirely. It's very important that you understand these concepts entirely because there are characteristics that price will... Uh, they're, they're, the, the type of patterns and the movement and the activity, price will create that kind of signature or print based on the ranges of these bars, the activity, the highs and the lows. If you're not identifying the right support and resistance levels, that could also cause some difficulty in trying to gauge what's taking place. So what we're looking at is something that I also recur, refer to as Wyckoffian principles. When I started to learn this back in 2001, it changed my trading dramatically. I stopped executing bullish and bearish engulfing candle patterns just because I saw them. Now, keep in mind, this is, this is a bar chart, but this would be an engulfing bu uh, bullish candle. And at that point, when that candle closes, you don't see this data over here to the right. But if you understand what's going on over here to the left, and you understand what's likely to take place, and you can confirm all of the behavior as it is unfolding... You are well aware of who is trading inside of these ranges, the inexperienced retail trader. Smart money is acquiring down here at the lows or selling up here at the highs, depending on which direction they're trading it in. Smart money is not ready to take this and trade this up and out of this range, if that's in fact what we're doing. Now, again, keep in mind, this is a relatively small time frame, so things could change because the activity that we see could actually be a bigger play on the daily time frame, for example. Just keep that in the back of your mind, but let's move forward. So what you see me doing here is I, this is an exercise that I teach all of my coaching clients. It's called, I, I refer to it as counting the waves. And what I'm doing is I, I'm identifying key waves within this price, uh, the price movement mechanism that I can see here that fits on this chart, on this time frame. Keep in mind, you're gonna get slightly different measurements if you're doing this on the same pair on a different uh, time frame, let's say the daily time frame, but let's just stay focused here. Let's say you're just trying to trade off of the 30 minute because it's very obvious here on the 30 minute what's taking place and when you should be getting into the trade. So I see that there's a pretty clear downtrend here, down price swing and the total volume, this is volume. Now I'm actually using a volume indicator. This is not MT4 uh, tick data. This is I'm going to share a little tip. I don't mean to confuse you, but one of the ways that I can see a more accurate, um, more clear, transparent view of the activity is to use futures volume. I teach exactly how to use futures volume when you're trading currency pairs, like the pound, the euro, the yen, the Canadian, all of them, Australian, all, all of those currencies that you like to use, you can use volume and you can use futures volume to trade. Now, you don't need to trade off of a futures platform, but you can use a chart program like this to confirm and to do this exercise alongside with your MT4 trade. So you'll notice again, I'm going to bring the MT4 platform in here, and you'll notice that the activity is all the same, but it gives me a much better opportunity to take the trade here with more reliable data. Now, the other reason that I use futures volume is that I do personally trade futures. I started off my trading career trading futures. So I relied heavily on volume. And when I realized that I could trade currency futures and that the price activity matched the same thing that I was seeing in my MT4 platform, I continued to use it that way. So I'm, I'm trusting 
the, the volume and the activity that I see here. So the amount of activity here is the amount of participation. These are contracts that are traded. 28,885 within this downswing. Now this took a couple of hours, but nevertheless, there's quite a bit of volume. And there it stopped and it created this solidified low for the time being. This was last Friday. Today is Monday, by the way. And then we have this automatic reaction, which is after the downswing, after the downtrend, after it stops, even if it's just temporary, Remember, on the bigger time frame, it might look a little bit different, but we're just talking about the 30 minute here. Again, there's deeper concepts that you need to be aware of that I'm not going to be able to cover in this video. So you want to understand this. I just want to give you a basic idea of how you could improve your results so that you can minimize your losses and stay out of the market or stay away from executing trades that aren't going to work. So as we see this reversal, or I'm sorry, this bounce, this reaction, I should refer to it as, that's typically what I refer to it as, but I throw out so many different words because everybody uses all these different words. It is a reaction after this downswing. So this reaction, this automatic reaction then creates a high. And at that point, these are my two key levels of support and resistance. I am well aware that there is another high overall here and that there's likely to be another low that will test or even go through that initial selling climax low. But these two points solidify and start this range of consolidation, which could be accumulation or distribution, depending on which direction it, it's likely to go in, and the characteristics of smart money and the behavior with volume and the ranges of these bars is going to help me identify what's taking place here and if it's okay to get into a trade at that point. So at this point here with this reversal, I would say this is just starting, right? We get a downtrend, the automatic reaction. Here it starts to, it starts to move sideways. I know that I'm going to get a test of that resistance. Possibly it may go higher. I know that I'm going to get a test of that support, possibly go lower. But the fact that there are phases within this consolidation before it's ready to break out is what is very important to be aware of. It's a concept that you need to understand. And the reason that the phases happen is that, let's say, for example, there's a selling and then there's going to be some buying. Smart money is going to acquire at the lows instead of buying up here at the highs. Inexperienced retail traders, and I know because I was one of them, I used to make the same mistake. This bar right here, this price wing right here has 14,533 contracts and it closed above that high. And I used to think, okay, this is it. I can get in, I'm gonna go long and I'm gonna trade it back up here to this resistance. That didn't happen. You see all these mistakes that you're likely to make if you don't have the, this understanding. But when I see this, I know that this is only phase A and what we're moving in through here is phase B. This is all phase B and I do not trade in phase B and neither do my coaching clients. We continue to track and measure the activity, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're going to get a trade here. We're going to wait until this is ready and smart money, all the smart investors, smart traders who understand these concepts are acquiring and waiting. And that's when you see the big move that turns around on the pound dollar that ends up producing 90 pips, 120 pips, 250 pips, and you can trade it on a small time frame with a relatively small stop. And your risk to reward or your reward to risk is going to be a lot larger than you typically would if you were just jumping in and out of here with these little simple candle patterns or these little 618 pullbacks that ultimately don't go anywhere. Again, there's nothing wrong with using those tools if you understand the big picture, which is the price movement mechanism, how smart money trades inside of these ranges and the fact that this is going to take some time to develop. You have to give it some time. Again, I'm not saying that there are not any little trading opportunities in here. There are for those who scalp. But for those who are looking for bigger, safer trades with smaller stops, you're much more comfortable taking two, three, four, or five trades a week on each currency pair instead of having 27 scalping trades throughout the entire week. That's exhausting. If you like that, there's nothing wrong with it. I used to do it but it's exhausting. And I really didn't make a whole lot of money at the end of the month. And of course, at the end of the year, I had to reevaluate my trading strategy. And I have very few losses as a result of doing this. So do my coaching clients. You need to learn and understand these concepts. Again, this is a very simplistic overview of what I'm talking about. But the price movement mechanism is important to study. Once you understand it, and you learn how to apply it, and you understand the different phases of consolidation, 
You won't be jumping in just because you see a bullish engulfing candle or some kind of small trend line break, and then it moves up just a little bit and rolls over and you get stopped out again. I see people drawing trend lines inside of little ranges like this, and they think that it's going to work and it's going to break and it's going to go, and then they get stopped out, and then they do it again, and then they get stopped out. On days like this, it's not a very good, let me explain what I mean by that on days like this. It's not a very good idea to trade inside of these ranges with those little hacks. I'm going to refer to them as hacks. I know that they really aren't, they're valid trade opportunities, but when you understand the mechanics, the mechanism that's driving and moving price, that's where a lot of people stop. A lot of traders do not understand that concept. It's a lot of work to understand that concept. It doesn't take long. It's just a different way of looking at the charts. Once you understand it, everything becomes clear, crystal clear, and wide open to you. It's a wide open opportunity. So what I mean by today, what, I, what I'm talking about is that today may not be a very good idea. So how would you know, let's say with this bullish engulfing candle, should you get into the trade, should you try it? Now, I also teach another strategy called the London, London Breakout Strategy. It's also something that I refer to as the Good Morning London, London Trade. You can see it on my YouTube channel. And then also the HL30s. The HL30s, you can improve your HL30s and the performance, and you can minimize the losses by understanding these principles. So you can see that on Friday, there was a lot more activity. You can simply just see it right here by just looking at the, at the volume signature. But that's not enough. A lot of people, again, if they don't take the time to understand the mechanics here, and the mechanism behind all of this activity, they just simply look at volume and they look at the height of some of these volume bars and that's it. They stop. They stop experimenting and they stop learning beyond a certain point. And this is what you do not want to fall into. You don't want to fall into that trap. Trading isn't necessarily always going to be easy. I don't mean to be lecturing anybody. I just want you to understand that if you're here to make money and you want to make a full-time living, it is going to take this kind of dedication to go beyond the information that you've learned on YouTube. You're going to have to get this inside information that will help you. This is, this is, these are the strategies and these are the methodologies that have been in place that uh, you, you might hear me refer to it as, and I'll say that some of the greatest traders in history for the past 100, 150 years have been using these methods. There were traders that were using these methods and hand drawing their charts with volume reading and understanding the price movement mechanism long before computers were developed. If they can do it, you can do it. Now we have the use of the computer and it definitely makes it a lot easier. I'm going to teach you how to understand these concepts in my trading course. That's if you want to. Again, of course, you can improve your HL30 by realizing that on certain days, there's just not as much volume as there was other days. So there would have been a better opportunity, let's say, and I'm not saying that there was, but I'm saying there would be a better opportunity to expect a little more activity on a day like this than a day like today, where you see that there's a lot less volume. So you can see I start counting here. As I start moving towards the London Open, which is a more significant trading session. So I'm gonna be paying attention. Here's a downswing here. that's inside of this consolidation range, by the way, but it only produces 72, 7,200 contracts approximately. And you can see that's a lot less than some of the activity that we saw on Friday. Here it starts to diminish, but you, you see where I'm talking about when it gets really, really busy in here. And then you see a little pullback, um, testing the highs, doesn't really go very far. There's 3,600 contracts, pulls back to 2,500 contracts. And this one price swing right here is 6,800 contracts. As we start to approach the New York session, and it sort of falters. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't break above. It doesn't do anything. So there's really no reason for me to be expecting a big move or amount, a certain amount of, of activity and price movement for me to expect to get into a trade on some kind of a bullish engulfing candle or a 618 move and, and think that it's going to hit an extension target, a Fibonacci extension target. It's not likely to do that. The volume isn't giving us that information. And you don't get the same information. You get less information if you just stare at the volume histogram bars. You need to be counting the waves and the amount of activity so that you can see where price is faltering because it's also going to show you where these turning points are. Now, it starts to come back down here with quite a bit of velocity and volume here on this 30-minute bar and prints 11,239 contracts traded. You would think that that was a big move. It is, but there's also a key point here. The range of this bar is significant. It's actually larger than all of the rest of the bars except for this one over here from last Friday. And there's more volume on this one 30-minute bar than all of the rest of the activity that we see here. The issue is, or the problem is, pay attention to where it closed. It closed right at support and above. Even if it would have closed slightly below it, with that much volume, 
with that much activity and participation, we would expect a really strong, significant close below that support. And it didn't do it. It's faltering. It's holding. And then we simply do not short here. There's no reason to sell it. And we wait and watch. This is also part of the confirmation of this price movement mechanism, meaning that we have phase A right here, the downswing, the stopping action, the automatic reaction here. And then we have phase B, and this is more of phase B, and we may be moving into phase C right here. So we're not ready to get into these trades. We still need more information. You'll notice that there's a test of support here. Now I'm going to wait to see if it starts to move up and out, and then a few more pullbacks and tests with volume. I'll be confirming with volume to see if this is actually something that may give me an opportunity to trade it up and out. At that point, I can determine a much further count and I'm probably going to be, if it works, I'm not saying that it will, I'm not predicting anything because I don't have enough information here yet. This is still a work in progress from the way that I look at these charts. Outside of scalping, you want to get big moves. You want to be in the big moves, right? You want to trade with the smart money. You want to trade when it's trending and breaking out. And this is how you're going to, this is what, you, what it takes to understand that kind of activity. And this is how you can track it. This is how you can trade alongside with them. This is how you can confirm that smart money is stepping in here and that they're holding the line and they're building a position and they're acquiring as much as they possibly can, whatever is available, and then it starts to move up and out. Final confirmation would be when it pulls back, it tests this level of support, I'm sorry, resistance, and then bounces. That's a whole another video for maybe tomorrow or the next day when it unfolds. But this is what you need to understand and you can apply this on all time frames. I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you get a better insight as to how to identify the days that you shouldn't be using an HL30. You shouldn't be using a 618 bounce. You shouldn't be using a bullish engulfing candle pattern because it may not go anywhere. It's just going to produce less activity, meaning that it's going to cover less of a distance. So there's going to be fewer pips as far as the activity from the entry to the target. And it may not even hit the target that you would normally trade to because it's not ready. You need to know when price is ready to make a move. And you can track smart money by their behavior and watching and understanding these phases of consolidation. If you have any questions about anything that I presented here in this video, please send me an email. I have my email listed there in the, uh, on my website and also on my YouTube channel. Don't hesitate. I will make a video. It, it very often will prompt me an opportunity to understand what other people are thinking that aren't communicating with me, that are not in my coaching course. I don't want you to make any mistakes. I'll stop everything. I won't take a trade to help a Forex trader or any trader to ensure that they don't make a mistake. If they're, if they're trying to learn my strategies and I see that they are, are you know, uh, considering some kind of an opportunity that they don't understand, I will stop and try to create some clarity. Again, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye in what I've discussed here. So please be very, very careful. Don't think that this is all of it. There's much more to learn, but uh, it can be done. I hope that this gives you some insight. Thank you.